so I probably shouldn't be out here, but that first video was recorded at like 2 o'clock. It is now 4 o'clock, and there's, there's ashes everywhere. This is crazy. It smells so bad. I'm going to go inside because... Mm -mm. Enjoy what you have rather than desiring what you don't have. Just dreaming about nice things is meaningless like chasing the wind. See that? Those aren't rocks. This is clay. Like real clay. This is the most detailed map of the human brain ever made. It was made from over 1,400 terabytes of data, equivalent to over 1 billion books, and it only maps a slice of the brain smaller than a grain of rice. Here's how researchers did this. This map shows all of the connections between nerve cells. It was made from a tiny brain sample removed from a person with severe epilepsy during a standard procedure. Scientists at Harvard then cut it into 5,000 little slices and imaged them with an electron microscope. Then used machine learning algorithms to piece together 300 million images and identify cells and connections between them, resulting in this. Ta-da! It's so beautiful. Subscribe for more optimistic science and tech stories. This right here is an interesting statement. Check this out, y'all. He's saying, yeah, we're hearing about all the fires that are going on in California, but they're not showing nothing is on fire. But check out what my friend recorded in Santiago Creek yesterday, which is in California. Check this out. Yeah, look at this, y'all. This is in Santiago Creek in California. Y'all see what's going on here? Look at the clouds or smoke. I don't know, y'all. What do you, I mean? Obviously, you see fire coming over here, right? But it looks like it's being, I mean, created, you know, for the lack of better word. Now, this is strictly for entertainment purposes only, TikTok. You know, I am, you know, raising awareness. Look how red it's getting, y'all. Y'all see that? Look at that. Look how red it's gotten, right? Look how red. Look, look at that. What the hell is going on? And now look at this. Look, and then here's a video from a further point of view. Here's the clouds coming out there. Look at that. Y'all see that? And then later on that evening, y'all, he caught this in the skies. A cloud looking like some type of demonic face. Look at that. And it looks like it's protruding through, like it's coming out of the sky and is looking down. That's, and you see the plasma? Y'all see the plasma going on through the clouds? Shit crazy, y'all. Look at this. So, yes, that is a very interesting statement. Now, I don't know what's going on in California, but I, too, thought it was weird that they're telling us that California is on fire, but they haven't been showing anything on fire in California. But once again, this video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I have no idea what I'm talking about, TikTok. I am only raising awareness to interesting situations during these interesting times. But let me know what you guys think about this video, y'all. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. Let's get this shift. Peace in. So, here it is. It's right next to this old hotel. And up on a hill. And this looks just like the one in the video of the person I saw the tree. I'm nervous. I'm not gonna lie. Because I already have like strong energy within me. Um, stuff falls all around me all the time. Everything else. I'm like shaking. <laughs> Alright, let's do this. We're going through. Oh my god, so they have this sign. They literally tell you it's a portal. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> If you try to open an old iPhone using a dead person's fingerprint, it would not actually work because the metal ring around the home button conducts electrical pulses from the finger to ensure that the user is alive. Things can be red hot, they can be white hot, they can yes. even be blue hot, but what comes after that? Well, as it turns out, nothing. As the temperature of an idealized black body grows, the intensity of the visible radiation it emits falls into an ever more slowly changing tail. So the problem is we're restricting ourselves to visible light. So if we could see ultraviolet or x-rays and gamma rays for that matter, 
we would perceive a different color, if you want to call it that. I get what he's saying, but this could be a bit misleading. Given the biology of the human eye, past a certain temperature, a final color will be reached. This is what it looks like. It's been called the color of infinite temperature. You can't say wavelength shorter than 400 nanometer. Basically, our eye is a radiation detector that maxes out over 10,000 Kelvin. Watch again. As Natalie tosses the ashes into the air, a shape emerges that looks remarkably like Biscuit. Huh. Some good vibes uh, sell here is testing out hacks for us that they see. As universities across China begin their new academic year, some students have been using large trash bins instead of suitcases. Douyin user Bei Mu posted a video of himself boarding a train with a trash bin. The train staff seemed a bit confused by it. Bei Mu explained that the trash bin is more cost effective. It's cheap and spacious. He also says that today's college students don't feel the need to conform to societal standards of beauty. They prefer to be their own artists. Another user shared the entire process of filling up their trash bin and taking it all the way to campus registration. The video shows that it can hold a quilt, is easy to pull, and fits smoothly into a car trunk. It can also pass through security and board a high-speed train. Some people were even spotted with fancy painted garbage bins. Two comments from netizens read, if you used to do this in high school, I might have laughed at you, but in college, I can only say it's super cool. And no place to go, you could even live in it. So everyone's talking about the sphere and these weird cryptic messages that it's displaying. I was able to grab a video of it because I live right next to the sphere and I walk past it every day. I'm gonna slow it down and see if you can see what it's saying. Did you catch that? It said, work is the blackmail of survival. See, to, to prove to you, that's the sphere right there. I'm gonna try and slow it down and see if you guys can catch those words. I'm, oh my god, I'm sorry. I found, um, it was live streaming and then I found this. Um, that's like the, I found this bone. And it looks like a hip bone of a human and it looks like it's been cut off. Me can leave. Um, and that looks like the bit that you put a leg into. God, these are re rave ghosts or strange creatures caught on camera. Hey, this is uh, some of these things is bizarre, extremely mysterious. Wait, I oh my god, it's like these ghosts don't love peace. Due to popular demand, I wanted to see what would happen if I put titanium under the solar death ray. But first, by comparison, and to show the power of the solar death ray, I put this rock on the hot seat, and the funneled sunlight immediately began to eat into it. The directed energy coming through this giant lens caused the rock to splinter and throw fragments all over the place. And check out what happened next. When the solar death ray broke the rock in two, I was super curious what would happen to titanium, one of the toughest metals on earth. I aimed the convergent sunlight right on this small titanium cube and it glowed very brightly. 
Titanium is very dangerous and hot when it combusts. So I used a small amount of titanium for this experiment. I left the titanium under the onslaught of the solar death ray for quite a while, and it got really hot and started to melt the cinder block below it. Titanium has a melting point over 3,000 degrees, and it withstood the power of the solar death ray, unlike the rock. Oh my god, look at this, this good vibes guys opened the door and found ice had created. Does charging your battery to 100% break your battery faster? I'm a battery scientist and engineer and so I feel like this is something I can really answer. We can get into the weeds, so buckle up. So you may hear that you should only charge your devices to 80% of capacity. So first, I want to just say that you can charge your device to 100% capacity and it's going to work. It's going to be fine. You're going to be able to use it. It's going to be good. You don't need to worry. But if you're really a stickler and really want to extend your battery in life, then sure, swinging it, as we call it, is the way to go. By swinging it, I mean never fully discharge your battery and never fully charge it. And the reason for this gets down to the chemicals and the redox reactions inside of the battery. So for a lot of batteries in electric vehicles, in your smartphone, they have cathode materials, which is the positive electrode, that when you charge it up to 100% state of charge, the materials themselves can start to degrade. And this is through some complex reactions, both chemical reactions with the electrolyte, as well as electrochemical reactions as the lithium is diffusing into the material and reacting to give and take electrons. When you're fully charged, you have the minimum amount of lithium in the cathode. It's all gone to the anode side of the battery. And so when you take out a lot of the lithium into the cathode, which is a layered structure, uh, the cathode structure can collapse and different defects can form in the crystalline lattice. And this is called like lithium nickel mixing, where you have lithium going into the spaces where nickel should be and nickel going into where lithium should be. They just mix around inside of that lattice. And that's bad because as the cathode structure deteriorates and collapses, it can no longer store that high amount of lithium it once did. So that means that you have less capacity for lithium storage in your cathode and less battery capacity, higher impedance, for instance, too. So the kind of caveat here is that different battery chemistries react differently at different states of charge. So with like nickel-based cathodes, they don't like being fully discharged, meaning they don't like it when your battery is fully at 100% capacity. But other cathode materials, it's totally fine to charge to 100%, and it's actually the anode that degrades when you're at, say, 0%. <laughs> so it really depends on your battery chemistry. That's why if you want to really extend your battery life and you're okay with swinging the battery, never fully discharging, never fully charging, that's a good way to go. Another thing to think about too is your charge rate. So using the right charger for your technology is important to make sure that it's being charged at the right rate so you don't get any kind of degradation effects from weird high charging rates or something like that. To teach you how to install a dimmer switch where you have a regular light switch. Take note that a dimmer switch will only work if you have a bulb that says dimmable on the package. Always shut the power off and then I like to check it with this little stick that beeps just to make sure. Two screws takes a face plate off and two screws will pull that switch away from the wall. Anytime you're installing a new switch, all you got to remember is to transfer the wires to the same locations they were from the old switch. In this case, I have two black wires, so I'm going to mark one as the hot wire. I remove the old switch, then using wire strippers, I remove about three quarters of an inch of the sheeting to expose bare wire on all three of the wires sticking out of the wall. The next thing I'm going to do is connect that first hot wire that I marked with tape early on. And I do this first so I won't get confused. 
Now it's just a matter of connecting the last two wires from the switch to the two wires that are sticking out of the wall. You use wire nuts and just make sure you tighten those nuts down as far as you can. The very last thing I'm going to connect is my ground wire. It's always going to be a green wire or a bare wire and you must connect the ground in order to make sure your light switch works properly. I turn the power back on just to check to make sure the switch works. Then I turn it back off while I stuff all the wires back in the wall. Two screws puts that switch into the wall permanently and then the cover plate goes on with two screws as well. Turn the breaker back on and ta-da, you're done. When you're in the city, do you ever look below you? Have you ever noticed a paving stone that's a bit different from the others? These guys get into cracks and holes and they develop a hard shell that helps them mold to them. If the hole happens to be a missing stone, then you end up with this beautiful square shape. What about you? Have you ever seen these guys? There is a huge difference between angels in Islam and Christianity. And that difference is free will. You see, Islam and Christianity are both considered Abrahamic religions. They do share a lot in common. And so both religions speak of angels. Angels in Islam were created from light with the sole purpose of obeying God. In fact, they are incapable of committing sins as they have no free will. In Christianity, angels are capable of sinning. In fact, many that have disobeyed the will of God have been banished from the heavens and are referred to as fallen angels. Which brings us to another very big difference. The devil in Christianity is understood to be a fallen angel. He's referred to as Lucifer. Now, but in Islam, the devil or shaitan is actually a jinn. And I'll discuss what a jinn is very soon. Originally, we thought electrons orbit atoms like this. See that in atomic symbols everywhere to this day. Electrons don't really orbit anything. They just exist around the atom in a vibrational state. Let's say that this ring is an electron that surrounds the nucleus of an atom. But notice something here. I can increase the energy by turning up the frequency of vibration, but suddenly the resonance goes away and it just looks like a normal ring again. But then suddenly if I keep increasing it- This is probably, this is one of the best explanations of this I've ever seen. Yes, they only show up in these discrete quantized orbital regions. And then another higher mode here. The ring doesn't vibrate unless I give it some specific energy input. Now you can take these electrons out by shining light at it. So to get the ones at the quantized states toward the center of these, you need high energy light like x-rays or gamma rays. Friends don't cast shadows, but it seems that the graphics department at SpaceX did not know. Hey, because in this video, it's clearly... Did you guys hear the news that 23 and me? Their whole board of directors up and quit. It's very telling when a DNA company loses all of its board of directors in one day. It's actually very disturbing when any company uses, you loses all their board of directors in one day. 23andMe, you've got something to hide. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to follow that money. There you have it. Can you get cancer from eating corn? It's true that corn can be contaminated by certain molds which then produce toxins like aflatoxin, which can be carcinogenic if consumed in high amounts over a long period of time. But that's incredibly unlikely. For example, in the US, the safe limit of aflatoxin in corn would be around 20 micrograms per kilo. The average aflatoxin level in commercially available corn would be around 1 to 5 micrograms per kilo. So to even get close to that daily limit of 20 micrograms of aflatoxin per day, you'd need to eat between 4 and 20 kilos of corn in a day. In which case aflatoxin would be the least of your concerns. And even if you ate that in one day, acute exposure to that amount of aflatoxin is unlikely to be harmful. You'd have to do this every single day for weeks and months to experience the cumulative risks of aflatoxin exposure. And also corn does not contain 25 forms of aflatoxin. There are only four main types of aflatoxin typically found in contaminated corn. And these are the ones already monitored for food safety. If you're a corn lover in a country with any semblance of food safety regulation, you're fine to eat corn. You can't fix stupid. You can't heal toxic. Loving people harder doesn't make them love you back. And over explaining yourself doesn't mean you'll be understood. The day you realize this, you'll be free. Meet Cassie. See, this is where Diddy's problems started. Cassie was in a relationship with Diddy for 11 years. They split up and she told Diddy, I'm going to release a book and it's going to tell everybody 
everything that you've been up to. You're welcome to buy the rights to the book, but it will cost 30 million. Diddy says, nope, not interested. So Cassie goes to her lawyers and tells him, Diddy don't want to pay for the rights. And they tell her, actually, if we make this a civil case, we will get money in court, millions. They start a civil lawsuit, but the very next day, Diddy pays up and settles the case. The thing is though, a civil case is private. But the feds check the case and they realise, actually, what he has done is definitely a criminal case. We're taking this on. And for months, years, they're watching Diddy. Building more and more information, waiting for the right time to strike. There's a line of people who step forward. They've either seen something or something's happened to them and they want their money. His ex-partner got paid up, now's my time. And the prosecutors who take the case, for them, it's like hitting the jackpot. Diddy's case will go down in history. His fame and the people that he surrounded himself with, things like this don't happen often. It's possible if Diddy bought the book rights first time, this situation would not even be happening. This is the clearest video of a UFO recorded recently. In the footage, an intrigued pilot uses his cell phone to capture a strange metallic object he sees in the distance. Shortly after, the object passes just a few feet away from the plane. At that moment, the pilot realizes he might have recorded the most solid evidence of these mysterious ships. This video reopens the debate whether these crafts are secret human technology or of extraterrestrial origin. Y'all are not ready for this one. So, a lot of deep sea creatures are red. But since the color blends in so well with the water, sometimes it looks dark blue or black. Now combine that with a horn-like crown, submerged home, and a trident, Poseidon is just another name for the devil. Now hear me out on this. What if humans are just misinterpreting an underground tavern of fire, a boiling seafloor with hydrothermal vents, and exposed magma? And I did some research, and this guy named Dante, he describes the ninth circle of hell, a place where traitors are crushed in a dark, frozen lake. So that sounds like deep sea trenches or brine pools. Now think about this. Sailors used to call mermaids sea demons. Think about it. If you're going to be carrying a sparkling wine flute, you might want to carry it like this. When it comes to red wine or white wine, very similar. You might want to carry it a little bit closer to the base, but don't carry it like this you might heat the wine unnecessarily so. However, if you are carrying cognac glass, then certainly by all means, carry it like this. That's perfectly fine. And if it's a whiskey a tumbler, that would be the recommended way. Wait, oh my God. What? What is that thing? A giant spider. Aye, this one exists. Oh my god. Oh. What? This one can bite you and make you spider man definitely. Look at its size. My god. Neuroscience fun fact of the day is that the direction that you lay while you're sleeping at night can impact your brain waves and your quality of sleep at night and therefore your mood the next day. Research shows that people who lay in the north-south direction while they're sleeping have increased energy of delta, theta, and alpha brainwaves. And these are brainwaves associated with quality deep sleep and relaxation. And this north-south bed positioning is also associated with more positive mood states during the day. Now research also shows that people who lay in the east-west direction while they're sleeping have more awakenings during the night and decreased quality of sleep. One of the conclusions of the study is that our brainwaves are sensitive to Earth's electromagnetic field. So whether you should lay facing north or facing south is going to depend on which hemisphere that you live. I'm getting really into this neuroarchitecture stuff, so stay tuned for more. I need to talk to a cloud expert. Um, look at this cloud. Can you tell me what it is? It's all one cloud. It's all interconnected. What is that thing on the railway track? Oh.
Most people tend to cut along that seam, but you don't want to do that. Instead, make a lateral cut along the center. With a little twist, that pit should release. With that pitted side, make another cut perpendicular to the seam. Another twist. Now you should be able to easily pop that pit right out. Since peaches have a short season, an easy way to preserve them, slice and freeze. Now that's the 411 on peach pits, no matter where you live, even 90210. And look at this one. Look at how much vegetation grew up. It's 30 feet in the air. I mean, all the way up, meaning it was unattended for however many years. There's another quote unquote construction job. It's just a bunch of scaffold to put in front of the building to repair it. It's not building it. This is just, you can see all of the building is already there. This is an imprint of the quote unquote exhibit, the art exhibit center. They want us to believe this is an art exhibit. This is pure iron. That is pure cast iron. That is not hollow. That is 100% metal all the way through. The copper in the middle. You can see the copper aging right here. That's the bearing. Bolts. That's where a pin would go, cotter pin. This is some sort of drill. Archimedes screw with the spring at the end. That is insane. Oh, there's rings at the end, those are bushings. Oh, that's a game of some sort. I have no idea. But they say this is art as pure iron and copper. It's been there for years, it's buried under a foot of dirt. Roots have grown in and around it. It's been there for so long. This giant tree has grown into it. This is not an art exhibit. It's a pulley of some sort. Look at that. Pure copper. say these were powder grinding wheels used by the Confederacy to grind gunpowder at Augusta, Georgia between the 1860s and 18, like in the 1860s. They were made in Woolwick, England and shipped here. Those were shipped here overseas to Nashville, Tennessee. They were exhibited at the Tennessee Centennial Exp Exposition in 1897. So this is some of the stuff we found here that we exhibited. They did not build any of this. They did not ship this stuff from overseas. It was already here. And that's what the world fairs were for, is to make it look like we did all this ourselves. We found these things. There's no machine today without having a crane that could lift this right here. English people are good vibes friends who have been watching. It's a pleasure to be with you all this way. Now. English people, I know you're familiar with these uh, art things, you see? And that last video you have just been seen. Do you think those were um, some art stuff? Or maybe some big machine that we might not have been told about. Or you don't know who was using those machines, you see? Maybe giants. Because the size of that thing is extremely big. But my friend, all these videos are for entertainment purposes. And I'd like you to leave your comments and tell us what to think about them. Now, my friend, if you don't know me, I've been Y311H, and I really enjoy to be your host. So, my friend, kindly hit that subscribe button and join us on this mission of ours of spreading love. Now, as we wrap up, my friend, let's hear from some good Facebook that